Hi everyone, my name is Vijay, and thank you so much for joining today. Um, I'll be touching upon and talking about product strategy and um, product opportunity today. And I, I know this is pretty much um, a, a topic that uh, aspiring PM, or, or if you're already a PM, you would know about it. Um, and I want to kind of create a lot of mental models um, to kind of move fast um, on, on identifying these product strategies. Um, and kind of building the roadmaps. So with that, let me dive in. Okay, before that, um, let me quickly uh, introduce myself. Um, I did my undergrad um, in India um, in, in chemical engineering, and I worked with a few startups in India, primarily a zero to one startups in um, the space of real estate, um, logistics and hospitality. Um, and post my master's, um, I joined Amazon as a senior product manager, and I currently work on the catalog team of Amazon. Okay, um, yeah, so product strategy, and why does this actually, um, why does this term exist, or does it, uh, is, this, is this relevant to product management in the first place? Is it, is it more of a consulting term? Um, I, I, I believe um, product strategy, um, is, is a key to a bunch of uh, factors. And and this is pretty much the first starting point when you are trying to, when you're trying to build a product roadmap, when you're, when you're trying to kind of um, incrementally understand what incremental features that you want to build, um, or when you're trying to scope out um, you know the overall um, strategy of your company um, in terms of which um, direction that you want to take. Um, and and we look at we look at you know where does product strategy help you you know it it helps you to kind of ideally uh, for you as a team or as a firm to kind of um, really identify um, and then kind of try or really die in the entire um, you know scheme of things and there are a bunch of examples that we have seen where you know products that are companies that have moved fast and for the right opportunities. Have, have tapes so far in the market. Um, they've, they've still solving the problems for the customers, um, and you know a bunch of them, you know, that did die down um, because of uh, a solid product strategy. Um, this also helps you to have a very, very laser sharp focus on customer value because um, you know if, if you know day to day activities of PMs, um, you know, handling um, the business reviews, the weekly business reviews, monthly business reviews, um, managing the stakeholders globally. In addition to that, we are trying to solve, um, you know, kind of identify the customer value. It's easy to get distracted. Um, this would help you hinge upon or be uh, super focused on the value that actually matters. Yeah, and, and third piece around is the product roadmap. Um, so product roadmap is uh, how, you know, a direct function of our strategy. Um, so this is pretty much an output of, of the strategy that you've built. Um, and, and the moment that you identify the strategy, um, you'll have a solid roadmap that will help you to kind of have uh, the, the entire life cycle, uh, the urban life cycle built upon. And for me, the most important piece around product strategy is the fourth part, uh, which is identifying the product opportunities. Essentially, you know, it's, it's primarily exactly the same in terms of um, the different uh, pieces that we put together. And, and identifying the product opportunity is also um, very critically uh, when you're you know trying to kind of go after multiple points, you know, uh, there, if you're an entrepreneur uh, with limited resources, uh, you know there are ten problems that you think you can solve in that market. But what's that one problem um, that really matters to you and that you can solve with a given you know small set of resources, create a value, and then you know kind of scale it and move forward? Um, how do you kind of identify that specific one open opportunity out of these ten opportunities? Um, and this is not something new. Um, and this is this is something that makes or breaks a startup. Um, and, and this is the same for the teams, it's the same for the firms. Um, so I don't think the product opportunities are very critical and crucial, and we'll touch upon more of a time today um, in identifying those. So how do you define you know, a product opportunity, um, you know, let alone identifying them? So you define a product opportunity which essentially sits in the intersection of uh, these three pieces. Um, you'd always start from the customer, um, you identify, you know, what are the unmet needs of the customers, and you know, how can you identify, or how can you essentially solve uh, those problems, um, and and 
when you mean you can solve the problems, you know, can your team or can a company have uh, the capabilities, the infra to actually solve those problems? Um, and can you build that product or technological solution to solve the problem? Um, you can't ask um, a wireless technology company um, to go and build an operations network altogether um, because both of them are definitely obviously solving problems, um, but then they are you know, not really you know, kind of well equipped to do that um, right away. So for me, the product opportunity lies in the intersection of these um, three key pieces. You identify a customer problem that you think that need is unmet, um, and you think you know your team is well capable to do that, and you can launch um, a technical solution or, uh, or other solution, uh, product solution to solve that. Yeah, so this is, this is an interesting example. Um, I've actually stumbled upon this from my professor, um, and 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 this uh, would give you a mental model around you know what is the opportunity. Um, so if you look at um, the laptop of a tablet market, or rather laptop slash tablet market, um, it, it kind of started all with the Apple when they launched the um, the iPads. And, and these tablets essentially are great for the media. Um, but then, you know, they started off with, you know, videos and, you know, super good for gaming, but never um, a starting point for your, you know, uh, being, being your work -based. Um, you know, you can't work on it. You can't, you know, write a, write a document on it. You can't, you know, clearly think of building a PPT on it. Um, but that is a clear need. Um, you know, you know, folks who are, you know, using both these devices, ideally should need one. Um, and that is a clear unmet need. Um, so that's uh, one kind of clear customer problem. And if, if Microsoft identified that and they have an ecosystem to build everything, um, and they have built a detachable one, which is pretty much like, uh, you know, tablet to, you know, kind of a, um, laptop. Um, so this is one one simple example of you know how we identify the product opportunity um, for any specific uh, set of market that we identify. Three aspects of uh, product opportunities again. Um, again, these these only give you a mental model uh, in terms of okay, what's the problem that I'm going to go after? Is that problem big enough? Is that problem sizable enough? And when I when I talk about the problem, who who's facing that problem? Um, and can I draw that persona? Um, because um, essentially, it's easy to say that, hey, I need to build something um, for myself. And, and you know, what's that persona exactly looking like? I am a male of uh, XX years, or you know, I like doing something. Um, and I'm kind of trying to draw down the end to end persona, or probably um, the needs of that specific uh, persona at an nth level, at an atomic level. Um, is, is what going to give you a lot more clarity around identifying, okay, where does this similar persona exist? What's that you know, specific cohort that you're talking about? Um, so when you're trying to find a problem and identify that specific persona, that's when you're able to kind of, you know, kind of see what's the specific product um, that you can build that is, you know, kind of close to an opportunity. Okay, so there, there are two ways to, you know, kind of um, look about it. This. Um, you would also want to have a macro view, um, and you'd also want to have a micro view to identify these opportunities. The macro view essentially is to try to take a step back and look at the market, look at the competition, look at the you know kind of substitution, and you know, kind of really identify um, you know what category and segment actually makes sense for you. Um, you know you, you don't really think about a product here. You really need to look at um, how big is the market here. Can you give it in? Um, you know, are, are there any, you know, uh, product opportunities uh, that you can kind of assess here? Do you even see the infra um, or any kind of a, um, feasibility or the financial feasibility as a bottleneck or, or, or as more of a driver rather than a bottleneck? So these would give you, um, you know, an ability to kind of move fast um, and, and kind of give you an ability to at least to probably drop them a few ideas because you don't want to build something just looking in a small um, cage thought process of a product and then realize that, hey, when I take this model to the market, I don't really um, you know, uh, have the infra to build it. I don't have the infra to scale it. Um, so so that's, that's around the you know, macro view um, that I'd like to focus on. Um, Parallel to that, uh, you'd also have to have a micro view around, you know, what are the you know, specific product needs? Um, and probably drill it down into atomic level, um, into not just to the first layer of the product needs, but to the nth layer, 
um, to the specific specific you know personas. Um, I can't I can't stress this enough. Um, I've I've seen this in the past. I've, I've I, I see this currently in my day to day work. Um, really identifying which set of customers um, are the ones that are the target audience to your specific product um, would help you kind of you know move really really fast because end of the day you can't force fit um, anything and and that's only gonna kind of kill your time um, you know even even in the organizations where you're moving fast um, I think this would be able to kind of draw down that piece and give a lot of clarity to you. Um, and and kind of uh, to the teams that are actually building that, and you keep on defining it, um, and and you know you can only do a UX or a customer research uh, uh, for a sample, um, but then you keep refining the persona, uh, keep diving deep into that specific opportunity, um, and with a lens of a macro view. Um, so that's how I look at it when I kind of you know um, look for an opportunity both to the macro and micro view. Yeah, um, this is this is this is an interesting piece around um, identifying opportunities which need not necessarily start at one end. It can also start at the other end. Um, if you want to kind of say, um, I want to buy file at the home, um, you know, there's a solution around it called a router. Um, but you know, you we would also figure out that hey, this is a technology solution. Um, you know, you can actually solve load balance in the internet. You need not you kind know, of um, you know. Um, really burned on a specific server, uh, but can actually spread that, you know, kind of traffic across. Um, and if you want to kind of probably identify, hey, where do you want to go to, which restaurant do you want to go to, um, you know, you, you have different solutions for that. If you want to book a reservation, you have different solutions for that. So I think the, the key piece of the messaging from this uh, specific slide is to be open um, on, on both ends, on both ends of the spectrum, uh, where you can identify the opportunities. Yeah, um, and, and and you see multiple sources of product opportunities, and and that that's the beauty of you know kind of really realizing them and you know kind of taking them and scaling them, um, and and you can you can actually identify a start by yourself. Um, you know, you, you if you say you know face a specific pain point, these are the personal pain points that you kind of want um, that you would want to solve for. You can also hear a lot of these opportunities coming in as anecdotes, um, coming as um, probably you know, reviews coming in as insights um, uh, as, uh, from the customers directly, from the customers not directly. Um, that's a beautiful channel to know um, and understand the anecdotes there. Um, and similarly, you have analogies, concrete offerings, the innovation piece. So there are a bunch of ways for you to you know identify the opportunities, but then the, the, the challenge is always around the you know the ten or fifteen opportunities that you identify. Um, which ones are the right ones to go after? Which is that one um, specific opportunity that fits in, checks in all the buckets, and you know I am the right person to solve it, and I know who is the right person I'm solving it for. Yeah, um, this this is another piece where you know we would we'd always work backwards from the customer, um, and not necessarily every single time in every single product. Um, your your feature is a proportionality um, to your uh, value. Um, essentially, not not every product feature uh, will bring in a similar set of value. Um, there are tons of products that you know um, that you know uh, any incremental feature has only you know kind of grown the company exponentially. Um, but but you'd rather not start there. You only start from okay, what else can I solve from a customer? And can I can that convert into uh, incremental feature rather than what new feature can I start? Will that solve my customer problem? Um, so so leadership focus uh, only on the product. Um, yeah, and focusing on the segment. Um, you know, not always your uh, persona or causality, um, and not always what customers uh, think they need is always the right need. Um, yeah, that, that's a nuance in there, but uh, ideally, you know, uh, the, the key mantra I, I kind of always uh, follow is, you know, you work buckets from the customer, and then you kind of, you know, uh, figure out or uh, unpeel the onion from there. Now, once you've identified, uh, you know, you you know the various sources, you know, a mental model to say, okay, which one is the right one to prioritize. How do you assess these opportunities? Um, you know, there has to be a model where you say, okay. Out of this 10, there's that one piece that matters to me. I am the right person to do it. I'm the right team to do it. I'll go after it. Um, 
but what's that what's that thought process behind it um the thought process is threefold right um essentially can you take that product to the market um do you do you think that you know you can actually solve it for scale um and is it actually a real problem um and can you actually you know kind of do it as a company as a team as as an individual um does it does it fill you know with the capabilities and the differentiation piece that you bring in um can you win if you take it to the market and if you take it to the market it's real um you can win but is it worth it um you can identify a problem um which something you can win but there is a marginal value um that you can probably bring in, you know, or generate uh, for your customers and then for yourself um does that matter so these are the three different sort of you know ways to look at it um i think uh, all three should make sense um and and it kind of depends on different industries and different you know product segments to see okay i might not really kind of um you know care about the monetary value but you know what is that you know value add to the problem a value to the customer that i'm solving um so these are the three ways that i can identify um to figure out hey what's the opportunity um it's worth you know is it is it worth pursuing so that i think i think i like to probably take uh, you know i'd like you to take these five questions back um you know what exactly uh, the problem uh, will solve and you know that kind of tells you the entire uh, pain points and the needs um and whom are you solving this from and how big is the market you know, this will tell you about the entire target market um and why are we suited you, know, you as a team you as an entrepreneur you as a pm you as an organization why are you suited uh, to do this and if you choose to can you actually go back is it to a door um and then tell you about you know different capabilities that you can bring on the table and how can you get this to the market um you know that will essentially also be tell you, you know if it's even you know, worth taking to the market um and and once you know everything you know, how do you really measure the success of this and then keep reiterating um i mean these are the five key you know kind of aspects that you would like to kind of keep um thinking about i mean you know, stumble upon these product opportunities and honestly i think when you're in your day to day life as a pm as well um it will always be time box it it will always be easier to get distracted um with with, with so many nuances that so specific to team not necessarily we do think the big picture around hey how is it actually moving the needle um for the company so i think these are the mental models that will help you to quickly you know follow the path um and then kind of have the road map built in um because that's where you know you would have a lot more clear alignment because um not everything opportunity and strategy in the right way would lead you probably for something else um and that's what something some other you know kind of prioritization might lead the entire downstream uh, go for a toss um so i think that's the reason i i i'm super um uh, i'm a big like believer um in having this one right um and then you know kind of figuring out the downstream um but yeah um this is this is what i want to kind of talk about today um thank you so much for joining in and please feel free to drop in any questions or comments